How's it going everybody? Darth Dwayne here, bringing you a let's play of FTL, which stands for Faster Than Light. This is a indie roguelike game uh, with a sci-fi twist that, uh, if you've never played a roguelike before, basically means they are either moderately hard to very hard, and death is permanent. So, you can only save your current progress in the game, you can't reload if you die. Once you die, you have to start over. So you just kind of have to accept that death is a part of the game and uh, be prepared for it. Let's jump right in here. In the beginning, we only have access to one ship. Um, if we do beat the game, we'll unlock further ships and so on. And uh, it's a human ship. We have an all-human crew to start. There are alien crew members we can get in the game, and they all have little perks. Uh, we'll get into that more in a sec. Um, so let's jump right in here with the Kestrel. So here's the premise of the game. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. So that's the basics. So this is our ship. You can see we've got three crew members right now. And we have these different areas of the ship. I'm going to send the crew members to man different systems because that increases their efficiency. We'll get one guy on the shields and one guy on the weapons. You can see right now we're paused. Um, you can pause the game at any time by hitting the space bar. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause it so our crew members can move. And we'll start explaining our systems. This is our available power here, and this is power that's being used up. So I could take away power from the shields if I wanted to, and you can see we get two available power there. Obviously, taking away power from the shields is a poor decision, so we're going to go ahead and power the shields back up again. And uh, so this is shields, engines, O2 systems. Shields and engines are pretty obvious. O2 systems refills the ship with oxygen. You can see here if I open this airlock, immediately the oxygen flows out, and it would damage our crew to be in there. So the O2 system is slowly going to refill that with oxygen. When our ship gets damaged and there's hull breaches, um, the oxygen will slowly slip out, so that's very important. This is the med bay, which will heal up our characters. And this is weapons. As you can see, our weapons are unpowered at this point. So let's go ahead and power them up. And you can see that our available power dropped to zero. Over here, you have passive systems. These do take power. However, you can't unpower them, and uh, they're just kind of there. Piloting, sensors, and doors. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ship upgrades. This is where we can upgrade our systems for scrap. Scrap is our money. You can see here we only have 10, so we don't have enough money to really upgrade anything at this point. Upgrading shields will give us more shield bars, which is great. You can see over here that we only have one shield bar, so basically one hit and they are gone. Upgrading the engines make the, makes the jump drive charge faster. Whenever you jump into a new system, you have to wait for the jump drive to charge up fully before you can jump again. So if you get into a combat that you can't win, you want that jump drive to charge up quick so you can hopefully get away. Upgrading the O2 systems means that the uh, oxygen will refill faster, which can be handy. Upgrading the weapon systems gives you more system power to power more weapons or more advanced weapons. And upgrading the med bay makes you heal faster. Upgrading the pilot station increases your evasion. Upgrading the sensors means you can actually see into the enemy ship which is handy because then when you're shooting things at their ship, you can actually target areas with crew in them. Upgrading the doors makes your doors harder to beat. Uh, so when enemies invade your ship, it takes them longer to travel from room to room. And then upgrading the reactor gives you more power to power all this stuff. Whenever you upgrade something, you have to give it more power to power the upgrade. Let's take a look at our crew. Like I said, we're all human to start, but hopefully we'll get some more alien crew members as we move along. Humans have no exceptional traits. Some of the aliens you will see do have neat little perks, but um, nothing on humans. You can see down in the bottom right there, their crew skills. Top left is piloting, followed by shields, and underneath that is repair. Top right is engines, followed by weapons, followed by hand-to-hand -hand fighting. So as they do those things, they get better at them, and uh, you'll see those bars fill up. Equipment. We have two weapons right now, Artemis missiles and a burst laser. Um, you can see their stats there. It only does one damage per shot. So actually, if something had shields, we wouldn't be able to break through the shields because we're only doing one damage to beat the shield. And then by the time it recharges, their shield has recharged. 
which is why we have the missiles. Those do two damage per shot, and um, we can use them to bring down shields in order to, for us to use the lasers. Uh, missiles are finite. You can see here we have eight missiles. If we use those up, we cannot fire missiles. And 16 here, that number is our fuel. Every jump takes one fuel. So we want to make sure that's always, uh, at least we have some, otherwise we'll get stranded. All right, let's go ahead and jump to the next system. Usually every system you jump to, there's going to be an event. These three here are actually in a nebula. You can see by their purple uh, color on them. When you're in a nebula, your sensors do not work. Um, eventually behind us here, the, the rebel fleet will start to creep in on us as they chase us. So we won't be able to go into the systems that we left because if you, go, if you touch the rebel fleet, you lose. So I like to kind of get in the middle and it gives us time to explore. There's kind of more dense cluster up here, so we're going to head that direction. <clears throat> All right, you arrive in the middle of a plasma storm. Despite the harsh conditions, a rebel scout seems to be waiting for you. Plasma storm, I believe, means... Let's see here. Nebula means our sensors won't work. I told you that. Plasma storm, this section of the nebula is experiencing a plasma storm. Your main reactor can only function at half capacity. So as you can see, our burst laser, our shields, and our engine became unpowered which is bad news for us. We basically don't have enough to power this other stuff, which is, is kind of brutal, to be honest. I'm going to go ahead and unpower the med station for now and power back up our burst laser and hope that we can get through these guys before we get into too much trouble from our limited power. I'm going to go ahead and shoot our Artemis missile at their shields. And... Uh, Actually, we kind of want to get our shields powered up. Hmm. There's nothing we can really steal power from, unfortunately. Well, let's just see what happens. Alright, so we've taken down their shields. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and use the laser to attack their weapons so they can stop hitting us. You can see our O2 system has been damaged. So I'm, since we don't have engines anyway, I'm going to go ahead and send the pilot over there to repair that. I'm going to try not to use another missile if I can avoid it. Just to, Oh, I'm not going to be able to avoid it. So let's go ahead and shoot another missile at their shields. Shields are down. And we'll go ahead and shoot our next laser at the weapon system because they are repairing it. As you can see, it turned orange from red. And we've defeated them, which is great. So we get two fuel, one drone parts, and 13 scrap. We took very little damage, actually. Our hull, you can see up here, only took one little bar of damage. So we came through that all right. You can see down here our O2 system is being repaired. As soon as that's done, I'll get the pilot back over into the pilot station and we will jump out of here. All right, so everything's repaired up. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and jump to the next. Oh, got to <laughs> got to power our uh engines before we can jump out all right let's go ahead and jump to the next section i'm going to go ahead and go this way because like i said i'd like to get in the middle before the rebels start chasing us all right you detect a rebel scout on its approach to a small refueling outpost their weapons are charged but they're not firing yet so we can either avoid the conflict which means we don't have to get in a fight or we can intervene and help out the outpost the outpost is one of our outposts, and uh, we basically get nothing for avoiding conflict. So let's go ahead and intervene. Rebel response to your threat. I don't know who you are, but no one defies the rebel fleet. They move in to engage. So let's go ahead and pause so we can fix our power. Get our shields powered back up. Weapons powered back up. And we can go ahead and power back up the med station. And we will wait for our 
Weapons to charge back up as usual. I'm going to target their shields first with a missile, and then we'll start lasering down their weapons. Alright, you can see the different weapons there. They actually had what I think is a halberd beam. So they hit us, and then a beam came in and uh, swept across the ship to do some damage. So we've got their shields down, but it looks like we didn't damage them completely. So I'm actually... Well, no, I'm going to hit their weapons. It's always nice to stop them from hitting you. And we'll see if they get their shields repaired in time. If they don't get them repaired before our lasers back up, we'll go ahead and... Looks like they won't. We'll go ahead and laser their shields. Perfect. That way we don't have to waste, waste missiles. Their hull damage you can see there. Once we get their hull damage down completely, we can go ahead and uh, destroy their ship. We may end up having to use another missile here because their shields are almost powered back up. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot a missile at their shields and that'll probably finish them off. And it does. So we took a little more damage on that one. But we did get two missiles, one drone part, and 18 scrap, which is great because we replenished the two missiles we used against them. Let's see if we get a reward for defending that station. And we do. Great. So the outpost, ha outpost hails you. The pompous bastards expected free service just because they defeated the Federation. Take this for the help. So we get two fuel and 12 scrap, which is great. It would be nice to find a store so we can repair our hull. So let's see what we have as far as options for our next jump station. There's nothing for us to repair, so we're just going to go ahead and move on. Alright, I think I will go down to the middle here, and that'll allow us to kind of jump around here. Eventually, we're going to want to get to the exit, and that'll jump us to the next system. Alright, an advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near the small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. So... We, pro we, we have two choices. We can attack him, or we can leave without attacking him. Since it's a storage vessel for military goods, we should probably attack it and see if we can't get anything good out of it. All right, he's got weapons out the wazoo. You see all those weapons? So we're going to want to take those weapons down as fast as we can. Go ahead and target his shields with a missile first. The nice thing about automated systems is they don't have crew to repair them. So once we take a system out, it stays down for good. Unfortunately, all those weapons, he's probably going to damage us fast. So, got his shields down. Let's go ahead and take out his weapons. Perfect. So now we've pretty much got a lock for the win. Don't have to waste any more missiles. And you can see our guy here is repairing our shields. Go ahead and shoot a burst laser at the pilot station. And then the shields. Alright, so let's see what we get. 14 scrap, then we get to investigate the sits, the station. Station either abandoned or stripped clean. It seems to have lain unused for quite some time. You find nothing useful. So basically they just teased us, the jerks. Let's go ahead and jump out to the next system. Everything's repaired. Yep, alright. All right, perfect. So here's those stores I was talking about, which will allow us to repair our ship. Let's go ahead and jump to the farther one. Find yourself surrounded by a group of mysterious alien vessels. They hail you and apparently have some valuable technology for sale. Perfect. So actually here we could buy a crew member, which we might end up doing. First, let's repair our hull, which is going to take 10 scrap. So go ahead and do that. And we have choice. We can either buy a weapon. We have firebomb, self-teleporting explosive designed to damage crew members, and light fires can target your own ship, which is kind of interesting because if there is uh, people I invading your ship, you can fire that off. It doesn't damage the hull. It'll just f hurt the people invading your ship. Of course, it will light fires in your own ship that you'll have to put out. Halberd beams are interesting. They get reduced by shields, so you want to take out the shields first, but they do significant amount of damage, um, and you get to choose a, a section of rooms that they fire across, which can be very handy. 
Heavy Ion does damage to shields uh, and disables systems without causing hull damage. And we also have a choice of crew members up here. We could get an Angie, which they're kind of neat. As you can see, their repair speed is doubled and their combat damage inflicted is halved. So they're basically like little pacifists that go around um, repairing things, but uh, they aren't very good in combat. You can get to Mr. Bugga, the Mantis, and they move at 1.2 times speed, which is uh, can come in handy, at, but they have half repair speed, but they do double damage in combat. So when someone invades your ship, um, you can have them attack them, and they uh, they take them out pretty quick. And the other option is a, is a uh, human, which is pretty boring, so we'll probably ignore that. Now, if we did get the halberd beam, which would be my choice of the weapons, unfortunately, it requires three power, so it wouldn't be a direct replacement for our laser, because we don't have enough to power it. We'd have to upgrade our re reactor first. So, uh, in fact, we don't even have enough money for that anymore, so I don't even know, don't even know why I'm talking about it. I think we're actually going to get a crew member here. Why don't we get Mr. Bug of the Mantis? <clears throat> and as you can see, he's a member of the crew now. I'm actually going to have him man the weapons, and we'll move this guy over to the engines. The reason I want him on weapons is because, because he's so good at combat, we can actually use him in the central area, and if someone invades our ship, he can kind of react to all areas easier. So that's great. We got a new crew member, and he's pretty useful. So let's go ahead and uh, jump to the next system. Uh, well, actually, why don't we spend the last of our money on a couple missiles? Or just, uh, yeah. Running out of missiles would be bad, because we'd have no way to get through shields. So let's go ahead and... You can see here the invasion, or the... Uh, Rebel fleet starting to catch up with us. This warning area, you can go in there safely, but if you get into this second area here, we lose. But we've got a little bit of time, so why don't we go down to this one down here and see what's down there. All right. On, upon completing your jump, you received a message from a nearby ship. Greetings, welcome to our beacon for a small fee. We'll let you continue on your way. They want 15 scrap. We don't even have 15 scrap, so pretty much means we're going to have to fight them. I believe this is an unmanned beacon, but I'm not sure. But as usual, we'll start off targeting their shields with a missile. And we got a hit. So go ahead and hurt their weapons so they can't shoot us anymore. Okay, so... They are surrendering, and we can accept their offer and get two fuel, two missiles, and ten scrap. We might get more for beating them, or we might not. And so far, our ship isn't damaged, so I think we're going to go ahead and accept their offer, because we get all that without taking any damage to our ship, which is great. I think we could attack them anyway at this point, but uh, we made a deal. Let's go ahead and keep it. There is a distress beacon down here. I find it at least half the time a distress beacon is actually a decoy and will get attacked. But uh, let's go ahead and check it out anyway. You arrive at the distress beacon near a small asteroid belt and find a ship with pirate markings partially crushed between the large rocks. It must have been illegally mining the belt without proper equipment. We can try and dislodge the ship by shooting at the rocks or destroy and loot the ship. They're just pirates. Hmm. I think we'll destroy and loot the ship, because otherwise they're just going to pirate other people, and that's not cool. Despite the pirate is not worth saving and fire a few volleys into their hull, before you can scrap the remains, another pirate ship flashes on your radar. Perhaps they, can saw, they, perhaps they saw your deed, or perhaps they want to claim the spoils for themselves, but for whatever reason, they're charging weapons. So let's go ahead and fight these guys. Once again, missile to the shields. And they damaged our weapons. We're probably going to because uh, Mr. Bugga is actually bad at repairing. We're probably going to bring in another guy here to help him with the repairs. So our burst laser is down because our weapons are damaged. 
which is bad news for us. Okay, wait for him to repair the weapons there. Let's go ahead and shoot a missile at their weapons so they can we can slow down their damage to us here. Alright, weapons are back up. Let's go get him to repair the O2 systems. Repower the burst laser. I'd like to not waste any more missiles on this guy, but it doesn't look like that's in the cards because they got their shields back up. All right. We can accept their offer of five missiles, eight, uh, or actually five fuel, eight missiles, and ten scrap. I actually like that because uh, that's a lot of missiles, and we might not get that many if we destroy their ship. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. We did get some some hull damage on that one, so that's not great. We could actually attack them anyway. In fact, they're pirates, so maybe we should. Nope, maybe we can attack them anyway. I thought we could. Nope, okay. So that's done. Let's go ahead and jump to the next system. Uh, it still says Distress Beacon, even though we uh, apparently took care of that. So let's go ahead and jump to the next system. All right, an especially well-armed pirate ship approaches you. Hand over one of your crew members, or the rest of you, and the rest of you can go free. So we can either draw straws and let them take one of our crew members, or we can fight them. I don't think we're going to give up one of our crew members. Let's go ahead and shoot a missile at the shields. Thankfully, we just got a bunch of missile from those last pirates we fought. And we got a hit. Take out their weapons. Easy peasy. Okay, we can take one of their slaves, which means we get a free crew member, or we can fight them. I actually think at this point we take the crew member, so let's go ahead and do that. And the crew member was a human, unfortunately, but uh, he'll be able to man a station at least, so that's good. <clears throat> Let me send these guys to repair this. And we can uh, power back up our burst laser. Alrighty, everything is repaired. Kind of have this guy hang out in the middle. He can be the Johnny on the spot for repairs. Now let's go ahead and jump to the next system. Let's go to this one. Alrighty, you recognize the ship as a well-known slave trader. He hails you and offers you laborers for cheap. We don't have the scrap to buy one even if we wanted to. We can attack him or continue on our way. Let's go ahead and attack him, because why not, right? All right, missile to the shields. We don't want to make any deals with slaver scum. All right, sh their shields are down. Shoot their weapons. Powering up his FTL drive, so... If we want to make sure we get him, actually his hull's already down pretty far. We can probably just ignore his uh, his powering up his FTL drives. See if we can charge our laser before he uh, gets his shields charged back up. Perfect. All right, slave ship is destroyed. They won't continue their evil trade, but many lives were probably lost on that ship. We get two fuel, two missiles, and 21 scrap. All right, we do, uh, our door system got damaged, so let's send our little Johnny on the spot over there to repair that. And we could use some repairs, so hopefully we'll run into a store soon. All right, and let's jump to the next system. All right, uh... We will have time, it looks like, to hit the store and repair up before we jump out of system and still avoid the uh, rebels. So let's go ahead and repair up. 
don't have enough scrap to buy anything else really uh, we got plenty of fuel we're doing okay on missiles so yeah let's buy a missile just because I think we're good to go there so we haven't been here yet so we might as well go there on our way to the exit Okay, there are only two ships within range, and they seem to be engaged in a battle. One of them has the markings of a space pirate. So we'll go ahead and aid the civilian ship. Ah, they have a drone. If you see this little thing here, this will keep attacking us throughout the combat. We can target it, but I find it's usually better to take out the ship that's attacking us rather than worry about the drone. Even though it is going to keep our shields down, unfortunately. Thankfully, they targeted our uh, oh, our missile missed, so that sucks. Thankfully, they target our doors first for some reason. All right, shields are down. Get their weapons, and hopefully, the burst laser recharges before they get their shields back up. This is where having a man manning the shields is useful because he's keeping those shields up as fast as the drone, drone can take them down. Alright, so we've got the shields fully damaged, their weapons fully damaged. Looks like we're in good shape. We should be able to take them out next turn. This is their drone control station. We could actually attack that, but uh, not much point. And we win. You can see after we win, the drone goes inert, so real, no real point in targeting that. So we got three fuel, a drone part, and 17 scrap, and we get to see what the civilian ship has for us. It seems the crew did not survive the assault. You take what you can from the remains of the ships. So we got a fuel, a missile, and nine scrap. So that went okay. Got quite a bit of stuff from there. Let's uh, get Johnny on the spot over here to report th repair the door systems again. I don't think we can actually shoot the drone after we... Uh, no. <coughs> All righty. So from here, I believe, yep, we jump to the exit because we got to get out of here before this uh, rebel fleet catches up with us. So it says you've arrived, arrived at the long range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. If you spot a small rebel ship nearby, it seems to have been refitted for transport rather than combat. It does not seem to want to engage your ship. You can demand their surrender of their goods or avoid the ship. They're rebels. I think we're going to go ahead and demand the surrender of their goods. So they're trying to escape, they say. They're pretty well armed for them saying they've been refitted for uh, <laughs> transport, but that's okay. Get a missile into their shields, as usual. And we'll go ahead and target weapons. Shields have been damaged, but someone's already working on it. Oh, this guy's beating us up pretty good. Maybe that wasn't the right decision. <laughs> oh, they got their shields back up. Let's go ahead and shoot another missile in there. And hopefully we can get them down before they get their shields back up. This, shield, this ship's beating the crap out of us here. All right. You detect faint life signatures from an intact piece of the hull. They were transporting prisoners, and the sole survivor offers to join your crew. Great, so we've got a whole other crew member again. So that might have been worth the damage. We'll see. We'll see if we can get to a repair place before we have to fight again, because uh, we're pretty beat up. So let's see what kind of crew member we got. Another human. Not too excited about that, but uh, that's all right. I'll get him, set him to work immediately repairing stuff. Actually, we'll let these guys do the repairs so they up their repair skill. Since we're not in any hurry. And I believe our crew is getting full. And we've actually got two more spots.
Now we gotta repower our shields. That's probably why we're getting the crap beaten out of us. Forgot to repower the shields after he repaired it. Um, dumb. Gotta keep an eye on stuff like that in this game. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and jump to the next sector. So we have a choice here. We can go to the pirate controlled sector or the Zoltan controlled sector. I think we'll go ahead to the Zoltan controlled sector because I wouldn't mind getting one of those guys on the crew. The Zoltan patrol their borders but let you pass when you ID as Federation. Let's hope they won't be so courteous to the rebels. That's probably enough for this episode, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, favorite, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, and I will see you in episode two. Thanks again.